Hello ladies! Did YouTube mess up my stuff again? I guess so. Because I can tell you I wouldn't have scheduled it otherwise than for 12.30 Central Time, as usual, without posting something about it. I am so sorry. And I, I think I need to get in the habit of checking maybe the day of the live if YouTube didn't mess up my time. I am so, so, so sorry. Hello. So, hi Sharon, hi Karen, hi Sonia, hi Cindy, hi Francis. <coughs> so, what we are going to do now is to, as I said, cover that, the pin with, yeah, and it's not the first time and I try to contact them about that and it's impossible. Hi Naomi, hi Darla. Um, so we're gonna do cover this pin and then I'm going to show you how to make some nice uh, beads using the uh, cutoffs, the, you know, remnants from the cane. Yeah, I don't know because I'm definitely scheduling them for the time that is supposed to be, not I have no idea what's going on. Okay, so remember what I I was telling you, and I know that I did a tutorial before with a uh, fleur de lis brocade cane. Give me just a minute to find it. So I can. Uh, Okay, so and I explained in that video how uh, if you use a regular a regular big pen and you reduce your cane at one centimeter with a square can. Uh, canes then you can f uh, make a perfect and seamless uh, covering of the pen uh, let me get my thing here so don't go by the inches you will need a ruler with both inches and centimeters and the cane has to be one centimeter that's valid for all square canes all right so what we are going to do is first to measure and cut the um, base and for this i'm just using mud clay my mud clay is almost the color of uh, <laughs> the sienna in primo but i'm going to go with a fairly thin one like a seven or an eight because you don't want your pen to get too thick than this. I mean, just not you. What in the world? I keep grabbing the thin ones instead of the thicker one. So let me go one more setting down. So what you need to do, if you don't have a long blade like mine, and I told you I got my very long rigid blade from Tiny Pandora with one of the kits she has. I think it was the one with wedges. So what you want is first to have a straight line and obviously another straight line and then you place your pen here 
and you measure it to be the perfect length. Yes, and that's why I thought that this is a good uh, high from Texas. And if I am too caught here, Elaine is the moderator, so uh, you can ask questions and if she knows the answer, she's going to answer them for me. And if not, whenever she sees me looking at the, at the screen, she can uh, get my attention that there's a question that needs answered. All right, so I got this. This is the length of the pen the length of my pen and it has to be uh, you know how usually I tell you don't worry don't sweat it too much but this time it does have to be exactly that and let us get this off I'm gonna make sure that I get another straight because sometimes you know it can get a little bit confused and don't worry much about this wedged part of the pen we're going to address it here in a second, but what we need here is to make sure that what we cut is perfectly the size of the pen. So roll it gently without messing up because you're going to get a line and you know where to cut it. is off and this will be where I'm going to place my my slices now I'm going to grab remember you can get uh, a set on polyclay play you can get a set of a four inch and an eight inch for just a bit under five dollars and the 8 inch is perfect for shaving in mica shift and in mokumegane and the 4 inch is perfect for cutting canes find my eyeglasses now let's start cutting and you want to cut uh, your slices at about 1 millimeter if at all possible and you will want to, to make my job easier, I'm going to make this shorter. And after each slice you cut, you need to topple it 90 degrees because otherwise it's going to get squished and you won't, you'll get rectangles, not squares. And it's, uh, as, I, as I was saying, this is something that you can do with various colors for various seasons. In this one, if you watched the live of last Sunday, I used Christmassy colors. Okay, let me place a few. And the way that you start, you start by placing them diamond-like and you want to go, let me go here because it's easier to see, you want to go with each tip of the diamond going, touching this and touching this. And that's how you're going to place all of them. This one is too thin. I didn't cut very good. But you want to make sure that you go with the diamonds. And is you know if you notice I place them Uh, you can place them in the same line, but I choose to place them alternately 
like one with the reds like this and one with the greens vertically. It's not a big deal of to do this. And it doesn't even take a long time. Just make sure that you have them all And sometimes you don't have to turn after each. Just make sure that you notice if your slices start getting more rectangular than squarish. And then this will go. And then again, I'm going to start uh, by placing them alternately. Instead of making lines like this with the pattern, you make diagonal li um, lines. So, but it's entirely up to you how you want to, to place the slices. It's just a matter of making sure that you place them diamond-like. Okay, this one is too thick. And yes, once again, I do have a Lucy slicer somebody bought for me as a present even if they asked me beforehand and I told them that I didn't want it because I do not like price gouging so they still bought it for me that was two years ago and I still didn't <laughs> open it I can be stubborn Maybe I'll put it out as a giveaway one of these days. Alright. So, red. Oh, this was the one that was too thick. Here I have a the other half. And just keep going. And so this goes half. So you will practically have three rows of these. But the thing is that if you watched my uh, previous video with the fleur de lis brocade pen, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It will look with three actually two practically but they will be you don't have to mark if you have these big pens are just all standard they are not you don't have bigger or smaller ones and if you make your cane one centimeter 
You don't have to measure anything. Okay, I didn't do... I did the boo-boo. Oh well, we're just gonna go like this. This was supposed to be backwards. Just gonna keep going. I'm gonna pretend that this is was voluntarily made. Haphazardly. But that's the beauty of using this technique for covering the pen and using the one centimeter side rule because you don't have to measure anything it will fit perfectly okay so i need 10 so i got six seven one more for the cut in half of the next one alrighty so and now the next row will be hanging over half oh you're talking about cutting the um, a good thing is, as you said, the lice comb, a free comb for pets is also good. And I was thinking at one point that you can make a slicer using two metal free combs. Getting a, you can actually get polymer clay. Get a big acrylic thing like this put it on polymer clay with the combs on each side, teeth up, and then you can go ahead and put the cane here and go ahead, because the, the cane will slightly, you can make it slightly stick here, and then you can go ahead and just cut. I was thinking of doing that. I was actually thinking of making a tutorial about that. And when you place these, don't press on the uh, on this end. Press only on this end because you don't want them to get stuck to the table, to the working tile. The thing is that uh, even if you have a few that are thicker than the others, remember that you have the sanding part. And if you sand it, it's going to look beautiful no matter what. Alrighty, so now I'm going to place it on the other side. focus on the end of the pen not so much 
on the top on the tip because that's pretty much where you have to okay and you can at this point press a little bit and gently bring it over don't press it at the end just here and then the moment you bring it over all these ones that are hanging over are going to cover this part here And now we have this end here, that's a little bit over, but on this end here, what I'm going to do is to gently coax the clay to get a little bit wedgy. And of course I'm going to cut the extra. And the good part, I'll check on all, whenever it might be that the slices are not perfectly touching each other. Because it might happen not just on the seam, but pretty much all over the place. Especially if you work on them so far from your nose as I did. Okay, so this would be pretty much it. Now, I'm going to gently rub it. And I still have a spot here. Don't feather. That's one thing that you must not do. But by doing this, you'll have very little to sand practically don't feather don't push your uh, finger over just gently grab the clay and push the clay no, don't go on the surface just press your finger on it just to push gently the clay in that position so check in again for any and all oh. oopsies and even if you leave fingerprints when you do that thing with the acrylic block you're going to go away alrighty This you do with the pen at an angle. Now we're going to cut. I'm still a ways over. And there we go. Exacto knife. No, because, and you don't need that because it is wedged here so it won't be able and then you're gonna put the uh, mine after you bake it so it's going to hold it it's not going to come off plus you have those little letterings on the pen as well
right? And then you can make a little cap. You can actually cut another slice. And I'm going to cut it with a thick one. But cut it a little bit thicker. Kind of like this. And then you gently squish it, but also round it up a bit. And then squish. And come on, come on. we have the pen and you bake it and then you obviously sand it a little bit to make it perfectly smooth and you can buff it you can also put some varnish on it if so if you so wish but um, what I would recommend to do on pens I mean you can do this uh, but you can also look and it, it looks beautiful if you look in my Christmas uh, let me put up the playlist again and we can look at it and you can use okay so looking for the winter holidays Let me get and show you the list. If we go on the winter holidays polymer clay tutorials uh, list, uh, the poinsettia jelly roll can is a round one, so that wouldn't really work. But you can use the tartan cane, you can use the any of the holly berry canes. Um, You can use, uh, if you make the gradient snowflake uh, in a square, there's another holly berry cane that you can use. So there are main, many, many of the canes that I made over the years uh, fit this design and you can make um, pens with them. So the ink goes, hold on, because I know I dropped it. Finnegan didn't. Finnegan stole it just a second. Finnegan has a little stash here under the table of stuff that he still. So you don't keep this in the pan when you bake. That's why you have to remove it. But after you bake the pen, you simply put this back on. And I don't dare to, to push because I would squish here, but this goes back on just perfectly. You, before starting to work on the pen, you remove the ink and you remove the cap at the end. So that's pretty much it. And, um, can you do a cover for it? Yeah, you can if you so desire. But this is a very easy to make. No, no, it doesn't go in the larger end. It goes like you have the pen has this lid. And it is here. And here you have the end cap and you just remove it. If you watch uh, the beginning of last uh, Sundays you will uh, see how I took them off and that that will maybe make things easier okay so as I said I was going to show you a few ways of making um, pretty beads with the end stashes so let me grab the first the ones that were from the larger 
thing. So I have these big, big honking slices. these ones <laughs> yeah I woke up yesterday I was a little bit of a zombie uh, even if I did have the life for the sponsors but we had that torrential rain coming in overnight and uh, at about 4 a.m. it started thundering exactly exactly and i don't know let me see how i feel maybe we'll make a pair of something too why am i putting them like this i don't know because i shouldn't put them like that <laughs> it's just talking so i'm going to place them alternately see i'm flipping them so i would have green over red and red over green theoretically but before doing anything else to them I'm going to get them separated again because but this is how they are going to go on and you can use whatever foil you might want I'm gonna use this is Cosmic Shimmer and I got it from Polyclay Play and this specific one is uh, Red Blaze okay oh, let me make sure that I have my my uh, Oh dear, it is. My big gilding flakes tweezer. And very careful with this. Normally, when I um, when I uh, work with flakes of this kind, I normally wear one of those surgical ma masks so I don't blow in it because it happens sometimes. You know, I'm working and I just get out a big sigh and then I have a boom explosion and uh, cosmic shimmer let me see if Trish still has it remember please to use my affiliate link if you're going to buy anything from polyclay play come on So she's got the gilding polish. No, she only has the gilding polish now, but I do have some good uh, big flakes in the influencer store. But you don't have to use flakes. You can use whatever. If you look in my uh, influencer store, I'm going to be a little bit to find it because remember that. So you yeah, we look for the leaf. Foils, but it's not in foils. Metal leaf sheets and flakes. Foils are the ones that you have to rub on to uh, make them stick to the clay. Yeah, I have some Cosmic Shimmer here. And I want to get this one too. I think that this one is the red thingy. This is Autumn Leaves. It's very similar to this one. Um, gemstones. They, you cannot find all the time the same ones, but... Uh, 
any of them some are metal they have beautiful uh, variegated one but even if you don't have this and you just use normal flakes it's gonna be just fine you don't have to absolutely use the fancy ones i just roll with it so what i'm going to do is to place a few and I'm going to pick one that is one sli slice that is fairly flat. If you have greens, green uh, stuff, remember that I'll, I showed you before. Uh, I have those little packages in the influencer store with all kinds of colors and you can actually get them as kits. Okay, this I'm gonna put later. I just need a few smaller flakes. And this is just to give it a little bit of bling. I'm gonna put the bigger one later on. It's a little bit too big. Stay here. My fingers are getting a little sticky from working with clay I'm gonna get a big one and you don't have to cover in the entire area uh, but what I was saying, I I love the variegated um, metal sheet. The thing is that these things, they might seem expensive, these big jars of super flakes, but one jar is going to last you over 10 years you can be sure of that so and the other thing is that the variegated ones because they have so many if you choose one that has many colors in it they fit with a lot of uh, colored of clays have a lot of stuff that's not to talk about the stuff that I put up somewhere and I completely forgot it uh, and then I do some reorganizing and rearranging of my working place and I'm like oh look what I got I had no idea I had that <laughs> because it's a while between when I order them I get them and then I find them again okay so what i'm going to do is to and you can just slice simply like this if you so desire or you can just go what i'm going to do is to make them longish and in the end roundish so 
so you see I'm pressing like this until I'm gonna get a round cylinder and they already look pretty just the way they are Just make sure that they are very well stuck together. And this you can use as is in a type of color if you want. You can use it straight like this. You can already see how pretty it looks. It's just a color combination. Or you can twist it and then get it in a color shape. But I'm going to kind of sort of Natasha them. Kind of sort of, I said. And you notice that because of the way the cane was made, you're going to have one side that's got a lot of, uh, of the ivory and the other side that has more or less the other colors okay so I'm going to try and cut them and you can make them tiered you can make them the same size it's entirely up to you they are going to look very classy and elegant people won't even believe that they are made out of polymer clay all right now I have these so these were like this here right I take them I turn around put them together like this and press the edges so it's a form of a Natasha kind of sort of right oh, there we go okay, they are gorgeous and you can Natasha them if you so desire, absolutely. But I did cut them in two because I like the inside better than the outside. making them slightly ovoid. I'm going to do a close-up later, later. So, okay. So, again, you take this like this. You turn them with the inside facing out. And then hold on the middle and start bringing the sides towards each other so that you cover the whole inside and only the outside is there
and you can do this with but it all, it will all depends on the colors that you used but with this specific thing uh, if you use different colors that have the same gentle uh, type of skinner blend you're going to obtain the exact same effect but now you see why I wanted the uh, all the, that outside ivory to be And on these ones, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually do this. And again, so when I have the one side with ivory and one side with a color, I'm just flipping it over. Uh, but I do the same thing. I unite the, I pull over the outside to cover the inside. and then ovalize it along the the color line okay this one needs to be make sure that you look so you don't have any kind of cracks ovalize and you can leave them like this or obviously you can varnish them so this would go like this normally but I want them to kind of make a similar effect on both sides of the bead so because here it's practically they look uh, pretty like that because of the coloring and because of the coloring you can use them in other not just for Christmas and stuff they do have a little bit of a fall ish aspect as well would have been happy actually he's not very happy with unbaked clay he he likes the baked one beads don't think he likes the taste of polymer clay <laughs> raw polymer clay that is with a baked one he plays all the time there we go so there are some pretty looking beads that you can make with all the remnants and they would make a beautiful uh, necklace now let's make a quick Natasha pendant get these all together here as much as I can Thank you. 
just some to give it a little bit of again because you want the, um, the whole effect of the Skinner blend to appear there you don't want to roll too much And remember, you want to get it to the point that it's the length you want your pendant and double the thickness, right? So I'm going to want it a little bit longer than this. No, I'm not making a four-way Natasha. I'm making only a two-way one. And there we go. And it almost looks like it's painted ceramic, doesn't it? It. And there we go. I'm going to zoom, actually refocus, not zoom. So you can see better how a Natasha made out of this looks like. And there we go. And it's going to have some shiny from the uh, leaf. Bring closer bead as well so you can see it better. So you can see that you can get a beautiful, absolutely beautiful effect with uh, kind of sort of Natasha bead. And with these, you can just make smaller beads that will still look like painted china. Just get them together and then you cut them. You can twist a little bit. But yeah, this is the, the whole deal today. I hope you liked it. I hope you will work on making some pretty pens for uh, gifts because there's still plenty of time still have like what two weeks to go till Christmas there's still plenty of time to and if you don't have bigs I do have them in uh, um, the influencer store in uh, baking blanks I do have bigs they're big 
something. But remember, when you do the Natasha, do not twist too much because it's not a good idea to do too much twisting. You lose a lot of the design. You're gonna have too many lines, exactly like it is. Remember when I, if you watched my uh, micro series of Mokumegane, I explain what happens if you make two thin lines and if you make too many deformations. Thank you so much and um, I don't know yet what we're gonna do next Sunday but I'm sure that you'll like it. Thank you, have a great great what's left of Sunday <laughs> and a beautiful week to come. Bye. Thank you for being here with me.